All right, so we'll call this a continuation of that previous video. Uh, one viewer wanted to hear more. Could you could you tell? Could you tell there was more? Yeah, there's there's more. There's a lot more. Um, we'll call this at least part two of three. Uh, part three will be the. I guess I'll kind of set the table today, and then the next part, probably tomorrow, since I'm using my phone, I can I can typically upload these same day without much editing, um, compared to some of the previous videos I've done, uh, which makes it nice, because I can, I can post stuff much more often. Um, but the next part will be basically a story, something that happened a couple, probably about two years ago, about two years ago now, a year and a half to two years, about a year and a half ago, and uh, I'll explain some of that today, and how the, well, I'll save it. Anyway, I guess the biggest thing uh, from the previous video, if you go back and watch that, I was, I was planting some begonias uh, for a customer. Doing a bunch of other things, planting some trees, uh, doing a little bit of hardscape work there. And, uh, you know, it was, the, the, main, the, main, the main thought was, you know, I'm doing something that seemingly now has value. Has value to somebody, has value to me too, you know, it provides a financial income doing these things. But... In the end, these things are going to come to naught. They're going to come to, to nothing. Um, and it's in that thought right there has been continually on my mind about looking at things I do, we do, people do, believers do, that are a lot of times just grabbing at the wind and useless wranglings. Um... I guess you would call this an edification. Stirring up to good works. But, you know, a chance to examine ourselves. Like I said in the previous video, what are we putting, what's, what's being, what are we putting value on the day in, the day out? What, what are we... Not what we would, how about this, how about not what we would say we put value on, but what does our life tell about what we put value on? I have a saying, it's like this, it's dangerous, it's a dangerous saying. If I truly believe what I say I believe, how can I go on living as though I don't? If a Christian believes everybody's going to live forever in one of two places, how can you go on not opening your mouth? There's a saying, uh, give them the gospel. Yeah, and sometimes use words. Yeah. You know, Proverbs 27, 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Is the next verse. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. I think about all the people that never shared how I know they never shared because they never shared I don't know who they are but those that were before before I was a Christian those that would have shared that could have shared the truth that chose not to share the truth out of inconvenience out of um, what they would have called lack of knowledge um for multitudes of reasons, for being embarrassed, <clears throat> for, for the rejection. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. That's Proverbs 29, 25. I think about in 30 years, first 30 years of my life, 36 now, I can't think of up until about that, that point, 30 years, 
one person that shared a clear presentation of the gospel. That Jesus Christ died for sinners according to the scriptures. He died for all people. He died for the sins of the world, put it that way. He died for the sins of the world. Was buried, dead in a grave. And on the third day rose again, according to the scriptures. Okay, yeah, we know that. We know that. We know that. Everybody knows that. I know. Everybody knows that. They have the head knowledge. But they have not applied to the heart. Why would you apply, if you don't apply that to yourself, say, oh yeah, he's the savior, oh yeah, yeah, I know that, I have the head knowledge. But if it's not applied to yourself, you don't believe he's your savior. You're not saved. If you haven't come to terms that you're a sinner, oh yeah, I'm a sinner. Yeah, but name your sin. Confess it. Agree with God. Repent of it. Getting off track a little bit. The the focus that that, that will be on the on the next video. Well, I don't want to give too much away. But again, to stir up to good works, the Christian, if they say they believe what they believe, called to be a witness, not a lawyer. A lawyer defends their case. A witness just tells what they've seen, what they tasted, what they know to be true. Some people haven't witnessed anything. That's the problem. Titles don't mean anything. Oh, I am of this. I am of that. Oh, sure, my life doesn't show anything. <laughs> Any proof of that. <laughs> so next video, I want to stir y'all up onto good works. I want to stir you up with some urgency. Uh, for time is short. Um, I don't want to give too much of it away, but it's something that happened about a year and a half ago, and, uh, it, it really ties into this whole, you know, if we believe what we believe, if I, if I truly believe what I say I believe, then how can I go on living as though I don't? As in this very point right here, if I truly believe everyone's going to live forever, their souls are going to go on living forever beyond the grave in one of two places, to eternal glory or to eternal condemnation. Not because, see, how, how, could, how could you say that? Well, it's not because we're good, but it's because he's good. You can't tell me a good, just person overlooks wickedness. That's not a good person. All right. Wait till the next one. Maybe some of this rambling will make sense.